Okay, taking a look at the warm up, which we've already done. Here's the expression 5x times 3n. What do you get when you combine like terms, which we just did in the last exit ticket? Who remembers what to do or what the answer is? Do you guys agree 15xn? Okay, you could do 15nx or 15xn. At this point, I really doesn't matter whether we put in alphabetical order or not. I'm going to keep it xn because you're going to see when we do substitution, I'm going to substitute it in order. So keep it 15xn. Okay, now what we can do to prove that the original expression, 5x times 3n, is equivalent to 15xn, we can use substitution and sub in the variables for x and n and see if it works for both expressions. The variables that you choose should be small, but my suggestion to you is don't use one because sometimes one can give you a false reading. You can substitute a 1 in, and it looks like it's the same, but in fact, it's not the same expression. So we're going to keep it small, but we're not going to use 1, which would be what? Uh, 3. And two. we need 2. Even smaller. Keep it small. Three. What comes after 1? 2. And 3. 2 and 3. Okay. Now, when I substitute it in, I have to add the dot. Five times, what's the variable, what's the value for x now? Two. Two, very good, times three, which is the coefficient, times three. So look, again, my five is coming from the coefficient here. This is coming from here, and this is from here, and n is coming from here. All right, evaluate it and tell me what you get. Any which way you want to do it. Michael. Did you get 90, everybody? Okay, circle it. Okay, so now the new expression is 15 times the value for x, which is 2, times the value for 3. Yeah, but whatever random numbers you choose for your variables, you have to be consistent for both sides. So if you're going x being 2 and n being 3, you need to substitute in those same 2 and 3s for your x's and n's for the new expression. 90? 90? So what we just did is we proved that 5x times 3n, the expression 5x times 3n, is an equivalent expression as 15xn. This one obviously being after combining like terms. Okay? Let's try another one together. Now you need three variables. First, combine like terms. And you know what? To be safe and to be to make things easier on ourselves, keep the letters in the order in which they appear. Do not alphabetize them. Thorny, you want to try it? Multiply your coefficients or numbers first. What do you get? 30. Good. That takes care of 10, 2, and 3. And now what? Very good. 60 NYF. All right, and give me three values to substitute in for n, y, and f. Go for it. Two, three, four. Keep it simple, as simple as you can. Two, three, and four will work. Okay, so now I got 10 times the value for n, which is 2, times 2, times the value for y, which is 3, times 3, times the value for f. Should be that.
Do what you can do in your head first. I think you could do 10 times 2 times 2 in your head. They would have to technically be different because they're different variables. Just not to confuse it. Usually different letters mean different variables. Or different variables mean different numbers. I'm going to do it the way that works best for me, but your order might be different. doesn't matter because it's commutative. I always like to keep that zero as long as I can because zero is our friend. What'd you get? What'd you get? I got different. Alright, let's see where it went. What, what did we get for this side? 1440 is good for this side. Okay, let's see where you want. Where 1440 is definitely correct here. Get the substitution okay? What'd you do first? And what'd you get? Okay, then what? Which is, there's your mistake, 360. Obviously, you can see it's going to work out because look, see? It works. Okay, 1440. You can do it in any order that you want. You should get 1440 for both sides. All right, what about number three? Number three, you have a constant and you have a double variable. Combine like terms. Paul. Yeah, good job, buddy. 36 n squared. Everybody see that? Hard part's done because you only have to worry about variable substitution. Tell me what you get for both sides if you do it right. Because I'm in the same spot as I was here. 144. This leads into really what the focus is of lesson seven. You can do it any way you want, it will still work. Okay? Order of operations or, or uh, community of, of, of multiplications that you can do it any way you want. Okay, remember way back when, three, four weeks ago, we did, or maybe not even three, maybe two weeks ago, we did a little review on finding the area of a rectangle. Yes. Area of a rectangle is? Any rectangle. Any rectangle formula. Any rectangle. What times what? Oh, no. Length times width. That's volume. Always. Length times width if it's a rectangle. Always. Now I am writing out the words length times width for a reason. Rather than using the variables L and W. Because when you take a look at the example, we're not dealing in real numbers anymore. So I don't want L and W to confuse you. 
but it's always going to be length times width to find the area of any rectangle. However, the sides are not measured in numbers now. Now they're giving you terms or expressions. So by formula, if I substitute in whatever they're giving me, 3n and 12y, then I've got to multiply 3n times 12y, which is still not going to give me an exact measurement because I have to give you the values for n and y. That's the way you would do it, right? Agree? Take a look at it because if you're not quite sure what we just did, raise your hand and I will explain further. Are we good, are we good so far with that leap? 3n times 12y. Now go back to what you do know that you just did. Combine like terms. Combine like terms. Combine like terms. 3n times 12y. Simpson, what do you have? 36ny. Right? 36ny. Like a license plate. Maybe not. Okay, so now I'm going to give you the values for n and y. What if I told you that the measurement of n, which is going to get substituted here, and forgive me, I can't give you small numbers because I got to make I got to make the, the numbers believable. When everything is done. I have to give you a value for n and y so that this side is longer than this side. So I've got to be careful in what I choose to make it somewhat we call plausible. n is 11 centimeters. Sorry, got to do it that way. Is it y? Yeah, y is, I'll give you a small one, 2 centimeters. Okay. Original expression was what? Skylar, what was the original? And the combined expression was what, Mike? Mike or Mike? Go with Mikey. The combined expression, 3n times 12y when we combine like terms. Okay. Substitute it in. Guess what? You may have to do a little bit of math off to the side because you're going to wind up with a big number. What is this, this third part? Combined. Okay. If you did it correctly on both sides, what'd you wind up getting? How many has 792? And you would be partly right. Oh, And you're still partly right. Oh. Close, though. You're on the right track. Dress up the number, but dress it up properly. 792 what? It's area. It's not perimeter. Get off. 792 square centimeters should be your answer and clean the right units. Okay. All right, let's go to example two and then I'll give out your Q. Just Q. And to bring in tomorrow's two can Tuesday, two cans of non perishable food items, soups, beans, vegetables, right? You can drop you can drop it off right in the in the in the you'll see in the entrance there's a box for six A. You can drop it off in the morning. And yes, you can bring in more than two. You're allowed to. All right, back. let's finish up. All right, example two, we now have the square. What If one side's 5x, what has to be the other side if I tell you it's a square? X. Now, it's a square, but it's still the same idea. It's going to be 
one side times another side. Everybody agree? 5x times 5x would give me the area of the square. Yes. Well, what do you get when you combine like terms? Beck. Beck, you're a whiz when you come when it comes to combining like terms. Very good. So everybody see it's 25x squared, not 25x, and it's not 10x. And it's certainly not 20x, because that would be perimeter. All right, ready? I'm going to give you a value for the length of the sides. I think what's going to happen is when you substitute it in, actually, I have this reversed. It's okay. If I reverse it, it's okay if you have it. From left to right or right to left on your own paper. All right, I'm going to keep it simple. X is 2. And I'll make it inches. Substitute it in. See if you get the same thing. like that at substitution. All right, Amanda, what do you have for? Well, you should have the same thing. What you get all together? Okay, 100 what? No naked numbers. Did it work for the other side too? Yep. This winds up after substitution 25 times 4. We'll tackle five tomorrow, and we'll do volume also tomorrow. So listen, let me, let me give you a briefing on the review sheet.